The Japanese national team are on course to qualify for their fourth consecutive FIFA World Cup finals. The squad, representing the land of the rising sun, is currently ranked the best in Asia. They're 32nd in the world, sandwiched between Denmark and Colombia. This is especially impressive given that 1998, a mere 10 years ago, was their debut appearance at a FIFA World Cup. That, of course, was in France. Japan had only reached the tournament thanks to a dramatic golden goal in a playoff with Iran. Their prize was to walk out with Argentina, one of the giants of world football, in their first fixture. It was a baptism of fire with many expecting a heavy defeat, but Japan defended staunchly. Just a single Gabriel Batistuta goal decided the outcome. This was followed by a creditable goalless draw against Croatia before they eventually lost to Jamaica in their final game. But even here, there was a positive. Masashi Nakayama's tap-in was their first World Cup goal. I was very young at the time, but I clearly remember that first game against Argentina. The other thing I remember vividly is when Nakayama scored Japan's first World Cup goal. Thinking about it now, I can remember that the school children were all playing football and they were all pretending to be him because of what he did. So because of that World Cup back in 1998, the popularity of football here in Japan just went through the roof. Atsuto Uchida is one of a new breed of Japanese footballers. Still only 20, he's already earned 12 caps for the national team. The influence of the 1998 tournament on youngsters of his age playing the game in Japan may have been great, but it was the 2002 event that took everything to a whole new level. For the first time in its history, the FIFA World Cup was staged in Asia, and it was Japan, together with South Korea, who were named as co-hosts. Japan's campaign kicked off at the newly built Saitama Stadium, where 55,000 fans watched their heroes draw with Belgium. I had moved up to junior high school in 2002. I was a big fan of David Beckham and even had his hairstyle at that time. But I have to say, I'm nowhere near as good as he is. <laughs> As that tournament was hosted in Japan, lots more youngsters started playing football. You couldn't avoid it. And even better was the fact that we were seeing everything happen here. That meant I was one of those who started to dream about one day playing in a World Cup. It was this team's results that had the biggest impact on today's generation. Having scored against Belgium, Junichi Inamoto did it again in the following game against Russia. It turned out to be the only goal of the match. The 1-0 result gave Japan their first win in the FIFA World Cup Finals. Under the guidance of French coach Philippe Troussier, the team went from strength to strength. Another win, this time against Tunisia, meant Japan finished top of their group and signalled the beginning of wild celebrations throughout the country. It's a well-known stereotype that the Japanese repress their emotions. That summer, the stereotype was broken. I didn't realise just how passionate the whole nation had become about football, and the national team in particular during that tournament. As players, we just moved from ground to ground and hotel to hotel, so we were removed from the outside world. We couldn't really feel the excited atmosphere firsthand. But we got a sense of it from the TV and, of course, from the actual games. It was strange knowing that the fans were getting so anxious and so happy with everything we did on the pitch. And I started to feel a big responsibility on my shoulders. Seigo Narazaki was in goal for every game of the 2002 tournament, including their round of 16 match against another surprise package, Turkey. Unfortunately, Umit Davala's 12-minute header was enough to end Japan's fairy tale. 
but their achievement on the world's biggest football stage left an indelible mark on the nation. Today, Narazaki is still first choice goalkeeper. He's been a member of every Japanese World Cup squad. Junichi Inamoto, the goal scoring hero of 2002, also remains, coupled with a host of young players trying to emulate his achievements. One day, the youngsters may end up immortalized in the Japan Football Museum. Built after the 2002 tournament, it includes memorabilia from all aspects of Japanese football, including their first competitive games and a Hall of Fame. But as you might expect, it's their FIFA World Cup record that dominates. Takeshi Okada was the man who guided them to that first World Cup appearance in 1998. He left the post soon after, but 10 years later is back at the helm, having taken over after the last FIFA World Cup in Germany 2006. Expectation levels had risen greatly following the success of 2002, and the country was attracting much attention from abroad. At their helm was Brazilian legend Zico, a veteran of Japanese club football who led the national team into the tournament. But they found themselves in a tough group. Having lost to Australia and drawn with Croatia, they faced Zico's Brazilian countrymen, the defending champions, and lost 4-1. Many people interpreted this as a backward step. As we qualified from our group in 2002, our aim in 2006 was to equal that feat, or perhaps do even better. And people actually expected us to do it. But obviously when we played in Japan we had the advantage of playing at home, and our group in Germany was very hard. So if you look at it calmly, it was a very difficult task to emulate the success of four years previously. The popularity of the game amongst the 128 million people in Japan has undoubtedly increased and has led the Japan Football Association to set a target of breaking into the top 10 FIFA-ranked teams by 2015. By 2050, they want to host the tournament alone and be crowned world champions. These are pretty ambitious goals, but then things move quickly here. We are all aiming to get into the last four of the World Cup. If we do this, we will surprise the world. But everyone in the squad has this target and believes we can do it. I really want it to come true and achieve something really big. First things first, though, and the matter of qualifying for South Africa 2010. We went to their most recent qualifier against Uzbekistan, played in the Saitama Stadium. Despite dominating, they go a goal behind, but in front of another full house, they soon equalize through Keiji Tamada. Uchida puts in another great display, but can't quite help his side earn the full three points. The game finishes one all, a disappointing scoreline considering the targets they set themselves. But in 10 years, Japanese football has clearly come a long way. Who knows what the Blue Samurai might eventually achieve. <laughs>